Michael, how you doing? Yeah, how are you? Good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Hey everybody, this is Mike Valentino. I'm Doug, obviously. Uh, so, we got Michael, Justin, and Boone. Um, these guys are kind of like our, our, our foreman on the site. They've been working with me for for uh, quite a while now. Okay. And uh, so, they, they, they know this job site well. We built all this together. Uh, we're building the dock right now. Uh, Robert, he's got a lot of concrete experience. Um, we pretty much running the crew. Yeah. Chris, I didn't even meet you yet, buddy. Yeah. Hey, I'm Chris. I'm Doug. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and Chris, uh, you're from San Marcos. Thanks for driving in. Uh, you got some good work working on concrete and doing yeah. form crews. Uh, Gavin here is uh, he's done a lot of pool work, uh, done a lot of steel, uh, a lot. I mean, all that good stuff. So obviously, we've been building one heck of a pool. For so, being 23, yeah. he has a lot of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just educated me on about yeah. <laughs> all the different pole coatings and finishes, yeah. and I'm like, awesome, awesome. The way we're going to build these foundations is we're not going to we're not going to cheap out. Uh, we're going to put a lot of steel and a lot of extra concrete. A lot of concrete guys will want to do like like one foot beams or whatnot. We'll do an 18 inch beam. I don't care. Concrete's not that much. Steel. I like using thick steel. You know, some guys will try to use number fours and stuff. Uh, we're going to use fives and sixes. We're going to make this thing really strong. This is the most complicated job I've ever done. Uh, it's going to be about 10 pours when it's all said and done. And on the back side of that hill, we've carved it out already into the granite. And uh, there's going to be a, uh, a, ba a sub-basement on this house. And then you're going to walk into it, and it's going to be first floor, second floor. So this is where the main house is going to go. Um, and you see the survey stakes. And so we came in here, myself, Boone, Michael, and Justin. We, uh, we excavated all this rock out. Uh, the nice thing is we're already down about 18 inches below sub uh, finished floor on the, on the foundation. And uh, so we've already set, we'll put the string lines back up, but we've got the string lines that we're tying in for the first floor sub-basement. This uh, string line over here, we're going to have to recheck it, mainly because uh, we, we hit it with a machine <laughs> going down that hill. And uh, we're going to square it up, make sure it's good. But that string line will run back to the string line we have set right there, which I don't think was hit. So we'll square it up, make sure that's good. Um, so you see the foundation sits, I'm pretty much standing on the edge of the foundation here. So we're going to have a 10 foot wide driveway we're going to put in yeah. and then we're going to build a structure just out of steel and it's going to be number fives, um, one foot you know, one foot spacing on the steel and double caged. It's going to be a 12 inch thick retaining wall. We're going to put batter boards up on this side and when you spray the gunite, you know, they'll, they'll form it up and shape it up. So that is this little section of project. We're going to form that up and that's where the arc is for the pool because as we build backwards, we're going to be building the pool foundation and then we come back to the house foundation, we can't have this keel shift at all or move. So it's pretty much holding everything up from sliding down this hill. The other thing that makes it a little more complicated when we form this up, it's gonna be a double set of forms because um, we have to put a French drain behind it. And then up the hill, this entire, up this hill, we're gonna be doing flat work. And the, uh, the folks that own this property, you can see where we put the uh, electrical conduit in. They want us to put a driveway in all the way down from the water all the way up to here. I know you're all going, man, this is an easy job. Well, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> down here is the water, so I guess the plans are backwards if you all think of it like that. But here's the garage structure, the house structure uh, up top here. And this is the, uh, the only the, uh, the sub-basement portion. You see this is where the retaining wall is that's, that's built. And the retaining wall follows those stakes. There's five-foot offsets on the, um, on the property mm -hmm. and the... The city here is very particular, and even the overhangs of the building can't be more than about a foot. The foundation has to be six and a half feet over, which the survey crew already staked for us. This is the pool foundation, okay? And it is uh, structurally engineered, which is great. Uh, the engineers did leave off. I wouldn't call it a mistake, they just left it off. So what we're forming, the very first thing, I was talking about the arc and the four foot dam keel. That is this portion right along here and the engineers drew it at three and a half feet. But what they forgot to do was is to add the actual pool. Once the uh, gunite company comes on and sprays the gunite, they have to add a foot. And so we have to expand this by an extra foot. So we're gonna do a double beam underneath it. We're gonna build it like a retaining wall. And so it's gonna be an overbuild on this beam, an overbuild on this beam. On the cross members on top, we can, I have number fours, because uh, it's not holding that much weight. But under the main structural portion of the, uh, the pool, we're going to use uh, the larger steel and the bigger beams, whereas on the top portion, it's it's already overbuilt at a foot thick, and then we have another foot of gun gunite sitting on top of it. We're actually going to have the rebar from the finished floor. We're going to have it stick up a foot, and so that way we, the pool company can tie 
of steel into uh, to the pool right into the foundation. So we're gonna have steel sticking out here and here. So if you guys wanna, let's get our tools out. Yeah. We'll cut some boards and uh, we'll set all the way down at the next property pin. We're gonna set, it's a 12 inch thick gunite wall as a plan. We'll set eight inches on this property line and four inches that way because they're gonna do a, um, a rock uh, masonry coat, which will be six inches. So we're gonna share it right down the middle. I think this is a good grade line, but I think it needs to come up a little bit. Okay. You want to lower this yep. one? More. More. Right there. Got the best guys on it. <laughs> Alright, the double checker. I'd, I'd say that's pretty good. So the balcony is actually going to overhang the pool by one foot. And then you got a seven foot drop for the vanishing edge. And you got a three inch drop from the pool deck to the house because you want water to shed away from the house, right? I actually started measuring up top on the front door entry and it st st stair steps down off that string line to the basement level, okay. to the, to the uh, patio level, to the water level, to the foundation, to the key level, down to the ground level. So there's actually six stair steps as it tears up and down. It's pretty cool. What we're doing is we're putting in a little bit of a retaining wall to hold back the road since the soil is so soft. And so we, we trenched over from the main retaining wall and it's just gonna it's gonna kinda arc around and it'll tie into the driveway here. We had a lot of cave in from the from the rain uh, last week and so I can't get the machine in there now, so we're gonna have to have the guys hand dig it, which is gonna be a lot of work. They're putting the batter boards up so that when we spray the gunite, um, it's got something to shoot against. It doesn't have to be very strong, but just to hold the gunite back. And uh, at the bottom with those gaps we'll put a little pegboard to seal it up. But we're gonna run the batter boards pretty much along the string line on the way down and then uh, the bottom of the uh, I don't want to call it a cliff but the bottom, bottom of the drop off they're building the scaffolding so they have something to stand on where they can put the rebar up and it also kind of acts as a safety deal so the guys aren't standing right near the edge so we can kind of do a platform uh, while we're putting everything together but right here at the where the, where the steps joint um, with that little concrete platform the batter boards are going to flip and because uh, they'll start, they'll spray gunite from this side and then they'll spray from the other side to get the retaining wall down the hill. But it looks, it's a lot of work, but it's, a, it's quite a bit less work than actually forming it up for a retaining wall. So the gunite will go up quite a bit faster. And I think in the end it'll be stronger when we're all done. How you doing, Mike? Coming through. Yeah. I'm kind of like George Strait, all my exes live in Texas. You gotta see Garth Brooks if you wanna see somebody put on a show. George sings. Yeah. He just stands up there and sings all the songs with Brooks. He gets He's after a it. showman. Yeah, so this is uh so it was gonna be just like a three three car garage. When you when you build something, um, the cost is in the foundation and, and the bottom structure. To go second floor, you're really at about a thirty percent, maybe twenty five percent cost. And so but you're adding on on this specific structure, adding on seventeen hundred square feet more to the livable space. So if you would have just built the garage, well that's um uh, you know, that's a pretty big expense. But extra 1,700 square feet for and then when the owners sell this place, that's going to be at, at several hundred dollars per square foot. That's going to be a quite a nice investment. So, once again, not necessary, but just a nice add-on. Bring another piece of plywood. We cut the triangle out right yeah. here yeah. and then we just put a bottom frame right here to right here and nail that down right here and maybe like one or two stakes right in the middle like how we did that yeah. that yeah. would be good because we have to measure twice and cut once <laughs> and then we'll just fill it underneath with the dirt whatever hole it left open yeah. and that will act as another backing too so sounds good to me
right here when we do the next section of the wall we're gonna uh we'll have the rebar stick out further so we can keep the wall going mm -hmm. and uh that's probably a little high we'll, we'll put a batter board this way eventually and it doesn't have to be any sort of shape it'll just be it can be just a, a four by four and when they spray it they'll uh with the gunite they'll we'll, we'll put it down with the steel at an angle down to this rebar it'll be here eventually and that way you have a structural uh, support holding from the ground all the way up to the top so the top won't want to rotate either so um, you, do you still want more steel coming this way yep okay that's what that's so another okay so yeah just every, right. every foot that you can fit so i'll just follow this pattern yeah perfect up to up to uh right there maybe. perfect robbery's got it drilled yeah nice right there that's it and then uh okay you know in this build oh my gosh it was slow we had so many problems uh but obviously when you can when you can t control the timing of it things mm -hmm. look like it's flowing but man we got the, the foundation took months you know to get just done the excavation took forever and then we got that done and the, the concrete dude finally came out and then he did the retaining wall it took him months uh, and then the framers quit mid mid midway uh the framers ended up uh they we got halfway through and the framing crew said no oh, we're, we're done it's like what i hadn't paid them uh for the second portion of it, and I paid them to do the you know the, the garage portion, but the above they just kind of like they didn't get to it. Eh, we don't feel like it. I don't know. I guess they, they got some money and they left. Yeah, but then and then the windows, you know, they, they took four months to get in, and that was just a, that was a long long wait, the lead time to plan in to, for the windows. <laughs> and then because uh, we couldn't do the stucco, because we typically do, you almost always do the stucco first before you do the rock, because all the droppings from the, the masonry products, you know, all the mud and stuff coming down. So we're gonna have the plastic cover the rock, and um, but because of the timing of the windows, the windows took an extra two months, and we went ahead and did the rock because the rock masons were available. And hopefully, when the stucco starts on Monday, um, we'll get we'll get all that done. And uh, but we're gonna cover up and protect the rock. The work is already done, and so that's a little bit extra work. So a little bit inefficient in the building process, but that's just what you have to do to get the trades when they're available, and also wait on the windows. That was the big holdup. There's so many details, and you always, always telling them, you always have to be a week ahead, you know. And then in this construction environment, you have to be months ahead, like uh, windows, four months. Garage doors are taking four to six months on back order right now. Uh, interior doors, uh, they're two to three months out. Uh, like I just talk, contacted the AC in installation crew, and they can't get ductwork uh, for the AC. They're telling nine weeks out for, for ductwork install. It becomes storage problems. So... Like I need to order the doors and for this house. As soon, my, my goal was as soon as I started on the foundation, I was gonna order the windows because it's a four month lead. So that's what I'm probably gonna be doing next week. But let's just say the windows come in early. And now I've got a, I've got to store, well, luckily I have a garage on this project, but I'll be able to, uh, I have to store a whole bunch of glass windows in the garage. And it could, it could be for a month or two while we're finishing up the foundation and then get the framing crew out. The same thing with the doors. You almost have to have a storage unit um, just to be ready to handle all the materials coming on. Because, you know, before COVID, uh, you could order materials and within a couple of weeks, and you know you're generally gonna get them in a timely fashion and be ready to use them. Now we're in a situation where you're at the whim of when you get the materials, uh, just when they, when they have availability. part man with this hill being all muddy right now but yeah we'll have to put the strap on better we'll get one like right here on this corner yeah. and then we'll do like in between every hole if that I don't even know if we need that many to the edge like this or how are you gonna uh, just, yeah, overlap them a little bit yeah half okay. and half
Not me. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring a few more. Alright. don't top them. Oh. Is that a nail dude? Are we gonna push this in? You good right there? What I'm trying to figure out is, is how to build. This is actually going to end up being a wine room. I'm trying to build around that, and that'll be an exposed rock face in the wine room. And so it's going to be complete, surrounded by concrete with a concrete lid. And it'll be cold because of all the concrete and the temperature. But I have to watch for the drainage coming through. So we have to design the drainage um, underneath it. But if it's all said and done, that would be like... You know, wine area, wine bottles and stuff, and that would be like an exposed backdrop. So, with natural rock, which is kind of cool. What's up, Michael? Same old stuff, different day. So we have an engineering joke, Justin. It's called uh, measure it with a micrometer and cut it with a bulldozer. Oh, there you go. So engineers are like <laughs> down to the tenth of an inch. Yeah, and then we're like, and then we're like, can yeah, we get it within a quarter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like. Bring my pen. So that's thirty-nine. Calculate it out. Feet. Yeah. Two. And remember, I said what we're gonna do is, is it's because we ex over excavated. Yeah, we're just gonna this, go straight. We're here. gonna bring it straight across. And that, that's going to add on to this room 12 by almost 7 more feet. So this, so now instead of having like a storage room, you can actually, uh, the property owner is looking at is it could actually be a media room. So you could be, it's going to be a completely enclosed, down dark room. And this is a great place to put a movie theater. A movie theater. Because yeah, it's exactly the right size. Yeah. It's going to be a total depth of 17 feet. And it's going to be 14, 13, 13, 14 feet wide. So this is going to be one heck of a movie room. And it's completely dark with no windows because it's in the basement. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely need that. And so when you're looking out, you're going to get the illusion that the water line of the pool is diving into the water. So no. you're going to see nothing. You're going to see yeah, water and water. water. So the, the, the vanishing edge waterfall will be right there. So you see how it arcs right there? See the opening in the trees? Yeah. The arc will come right around. You're just going to see water on the edge of that vanishing edge. Ah, oh, sweet. This nail right here is actually the, the bottom. Yeah, this right here is, I'll have to remeasure it, but this is the bottom of the, of the base of the pool. It's the very first trough where the, where the waterfall goes over. It'll be the catch basin right there. Okay. So this is the catch basin height. This is about height right here. As the beam comes around, the wall will be about eight feet tall, but we're gonna dig it right through here, another four feet deep. It's another massive beam of concrete that just comes all the way around that's gonna tie into the house. If we have to, this section right along here, we can fill it with concrete. Every two weeks, I'm gonna schedule concrete. And then it goes up three more, three and a half feet for the, for the basin. This thing doesn't need to be any higher than this. The basin's up there, but as far as driveway height, as we're going, driving around, and this is, we also gotta put a rock lug on this to kind of cover it up. So Mike, the, uh, this is what happens when we don't have uh, 
enough uh, materials around uh, and everything's sold out. You have to go source this stuff. And so we're using, and we can't even get a construction truck right now. So I got to use my Sequoia to haul 4,500 pounds of steel, you know, <laughs> limiting this thing out. But hey guys, what I'm thinking is uh, we'll probably use this stuff up the hill. So if you want to take the machine all the way in the back, and I'll just back it right up to the other pile, and you just pull it right on top of that stack. Because uh -oh, yeah, we're going to use every bit of this steel on that wall. Okay. And the big steel is coming on Wednesday, and this will be just enough to finish the wall up. And the steel coming on Wednesday will be enough to do the next portion of the slab. So, yeah, you gotta you gotta try to stay ahead uh, a few weeks uh, with all these shortages going on. Anything over about 50 miles an hour was the trailer was swaying. It's just it's just not loaded just right. The trailer's not big enough. We could maybe get a pry bar underneath this and connect it and tie this to the, the machine. It should drag it right off. Yeah. It should. It should. So, maybe I can get this over here and help you out. Watch your fingers. Hey, you can just wrap it around. Yeah. I think if you just back up, you can drag it right off. Yeah. Hopefully you don't knock a hole in your trailer. Like a pro. So, uh, no, wait, did you want to, after you done digging, did you want a mat down there too also, or just, you're just going to have the wall? No, uh, no this, mat. This fine? Okay. Just, what, what, what we're doing here is, is we, we kind of created an upside down U, yeah. Uh, yeah. what's going to work. I want to separate the house foundation from the retaining wall, so there's no movement at all. Yeah. But I wanted to point this out, because I had the engineer out this weekend, and everything we're doing here is correct. Uh, we're not over-engineering it, we're actually doing it right. So, right there where your, where your boot is, Chris, you can kind of see where the how the grade is and the material it's it's real loose and that's all tillage and from all the stuff coming down the hill as we start building that wall the retaining wall i would love to tie this in we're going to start turning it but as we get to that point we're going to actually it's going to start turning and as we excavate it out mm -hmm. and as that turns we'll get the the gun out in here we're going to backfill it with dirt mm -hmm. and then we turn it we'll, we'll continue what you're doing as it goes down the hill but that's that's a later date so i think that's a good stopping point okay right here. um yeah i think it's great i mean that is some great steel there guys how does it look yeah, it looks yeah. fantastic it looks good it's I mean, gonna be strong but like i said this is just too high for the rock plug we just need to bring it down in that corner right there about two 18 inches i guess oh perfect right. and then everything else and then it's just a normal double cage yeah. all the way down right here there's going to be an arc as it's going to arc around to the big beam that you guys are, are finishing out. Okay, so at about my head level, that's about the height. Actually, it's actually up here. So we're going to be putting in probably a, an eight-foot wall, and this is the exterior wall of the beam of the pool. All right, so yeah, this we have to spend a lot of time on forming up. It's got to be real pretty. It's nice. It faces inward. We've got the number quarter-inch ply. We're going to double it up for strength, and we're going to run the two-by uh, maybe two by four by tens that stick up out of the ground and they're gonna be like every eight inches or so They're gonna be vertical okay. and we're gonna make a nice arc as it goes around um, So it's straight for I'll get the exact dimensions for you, but it's straight for about 20 some odd feet It's straight over here for about eight and then it comes around as an arc on the inside of this We got the same problems that we had over here. The slope the material is tillage. It's very loose. Mm -hmm. It all wants to collapse So I'm gonna get the machine and I'm gonna dig get this loose stuff away from the edge uh, and then I'm gonna dig out the beam through here and I'm gonna put all this loose material right over here just make a big pile of it so we can access it later with the Bobcat the engineers have called out a French drain which I obviously agree with and so we either double form it with wood okay or uh, which on the backside it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be any particular shape it just kind of arcs around at the, at the shape of the beam. Mm -hmm. And then we'll place the steel correctly so that it comes out. We also have the interior beams that I'm gonna get the machine on top of the hill uh, and we're gonna dig backwards. And so we have this beam arc that comes around for the main pool basin. And then the interior beams that go back that support the rest of the pool that we're gonna build on top of. That means that's kind of a complex structure that we're building with wood. But it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be strong. Now, our option is we could bag it. We can bag it, and that's cheap, but it's labor intensive. Right. But I have three dudes uh, that are with shovels that can fill bags. Yep. Or we can frame it. I'm asking for y'all's opinion. What do y'all think? I mean, for the wall, for the, uh, I would say frame. Yeah. 
Yeah. Framing would be Frame both sides? Yeah, on both sides it'll be a lot easier to. Okay. That's what we said. And I think structurally, the 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 uh, batter boards we're using, I think when we put them back to hold the concrete back, and I've got the concrete pour scheduled two weeks after this one. So we got two weeks to build this beam. So we're trying to make the the gunite pour right on Friday, mm -hmm. obviously. Okay. And uh, we're not because y'all, we're just running behind. There's just that much work to do. So um, I was gonna I was gonna be at the office tomorrow, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out here as fast as I can. So everybody's got their jobs. Um, Boone and uh, Justin are gonna build that corner wall and finish that up. Yeah. Um, when I come in tomorrow, I'm gonna bring in the pegboard and uh, kind of help shore up underneath it. Kind of the, if you call them flying buttresses, but the, the two buttresses going back, I'm gonna work on that tomorrow. Um, so I'll actually bring my hammer and stuff so I can work like y'all. And then, uh, but this is what uh, the, the main tying team, I wanna get you guys down here. And what we're doing is I'm bringing some uh, geo textile fabric uh, to, to put against the wall and we're gonna nail it against the wall. And I got some pipe that we're gonna run out through it. That's why the engineer showed me how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, it's, so we're doing a, a French drain up against a solid wall. So I'll show you all what to do on that. But y'all just start tying, we'll be able to slide that fabric behind the steel. Because technically a new house is gonna go here uh, when these folks build their house. So we got five feet to deal with and the five foot mark's right here. So this, this, this base we built here is perfect. And it's gonna come through here. So it's gonna get, it's gonna get real high here. Okay. okay. Then we're gonna turn it again, the outer wall steel, it's going to come above it at eight inches. Okay. So this this gunite here, when it's all said and done, it's going to be a dual cage, and it's going to be probably 20 inches. Here, here, measure that real quick. 21 inches. Nice. <laughs> okay, now here's the fun part. So it's going to get cold on Thursday and Friday, um, right? It's going to be chilly, which would be better than today. Well, Wednesday, okay, Wednesday is the last hot day in November, so it's going to be 82 degrees, Texas November. So bring y'all swimsuits, and the last 30 minutes or an hour, are, are we're gonna go out on the lift and do a little little diving in in the lake. Yeah. All right. Wednesday. Have a little road Wednesday. Day. So you need your swimsuits. Okay. Okay. So, okay. but you got. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be like the adult here. Well, you got to get all your work done, and then wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Today's Wednesday. We've got uh, two more days before the the spreading of the gunite. We still got a lot of work to do. I'm, we're pounding in a lot of steel on the ground, and uh, some of them are going to be about two feet tall. The dowels, and uh, y'all got safety glasses when y'all working around the steel and stuff like that. Uh, make sure you wear the safety glasses just in case you. I don't want anybody to get hurt with you know with their eye getting scraped or whatnot. So wear that stuff. Everybody's got gloves, and uh, so we need to work safe. We need to work hard and work fast and that's all I really guys got for you today is it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough day but uh like I said we got something to look forward to at the end of the day so I appreciate y'all's efforts and let's get cranking
All the steel we bought today for the foundation uh, going in the wall is going to be about 15000 uh, Ten years ago, it would have been uh, about a fifth the price, so about $3,000. So it's quite quite a bit of difference, and that's why construction costs are so much now, I suppose. So right above you, boom, that nail, that's the string line. Put your fingers right up, slide it up. I think we're all sufficiently tired. All right, all right. Hold it right there for a sec. Mm -hmm. But hey, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, sorry, I was late this morning. I had to go get materials. Uh, Justin and I, we went and got another 20 rolls of wire. Um, I also got, um, I think it was, I think we got almost a 50, 50 uh, stakes uh, for the next foundation build we're going to do. Um, and so the other piece of news I have for y'all is we're not going to do the gunite spray uh, tomorrow. I know, right? Uh, we were really pressed for time to get that done, but as it turns out, the Gunite crew called up and said, yeah, we can't make it on Friday. Uh, <laughs> so I, I tore him up on the phone. I was like, I can't believe you're messing my schedule up. We were pushing, we were pushing to get it done. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry, sir. And I was like, but actually, we were like, we, were, we weren't really gonna be ready. I mean, we were gonna be working until almost midnight tonight to get it done. But, so anyhow, we have two days. We have today and tomorrow now to get, to get spun up. Uh, they're coming out to spray on Monday. Um, so what that's what I'm going to do, it's going to allow us to, to extend the retaining wall a little bit more uh, to get some more gunite sprayed. And I think Boone and I will work on that today. Uh, it's hopefully be pretty quick and easy. You guys uh, keep on tying steel and working on that. And then I'm also going to break off and work on the, uh, the next the pool foundation. And uh, I'll be working with you, Robert, and Justin, Mike, and Boone. Uh, so when I'm not here, we can build that foundation. Um, so I'm gonna be digging the beams and actually dreamt about it, like how I'm gonna get the mini excavator up the hill and dig all these beams um, into the, you know, to the solid dirt, uh, get out of the soft stuff without dumping the excavator over. So uh, it's gonna be exciting, but we're gonna get that done. Uh, be ready for the spray on Monday. And uh, so we'll still work hard because we still have lots to do. And I'm adding more work on, of course. So we're cool. actually, <laughs> we're actually <Of> not. <laughs> guys get back to work, keep tying the steel. Uh, how about uh, Gavin, Robert, Boone, Michael, and Justin? Y'all meet up with me. Uh, we'll roll out the plans, and I'll kind of give you. A, we'll give a plan of attack for next week. Uh, it's a short week. It's Thanksgiving week, obviously. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll be working. I think everybody's taking off. Obviously, Thanksgiving. Uh, who wants to work on uh, Friday after Thanksgiving? Robert. One, Robert. two, three, <laughs> <laughs> I'll okay. work, I'll work. four. All right, good. So uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be hitting it hard. Uh, after Thanksgiving, and um, I need if you're, I need one more concrete guy uh, knows how to tie steel and do forms, and then uh, one your guy that you guys can do for, uh, framing and carpentry. I I'd like to have bring him out. So if he wants to come out next week, give him a call. 
Uh, that means we'll have, we'll be able to break everybody up, I think, into three crews. Uh, we'll start hitting the dock heavy. We'll hit the new foundation. Um, we'll be doing a lot of forming, and then we'll get into the steel tie-in. Yeah. So very, very busy, I think. So I think having those extra two people on board would really, really uh, uh, solidify things. But yeah, you guys got any questions right now? No, sir. All right. All right, ready, ready to break? Oh, actually, yeah, dude, I got two of these reels. Grab Gavin. Gavin! Where's Gavin? I oh, already scribbled on this one. Good. Great. Gavin, Gavin, Gavin. I think he went to his truck uh, or restaurant or something. You gotta drop it like it's hot. <clears throat> Alright, well, you guys, we can back break them, I guess. <clears throat> Alright, so here's foundation plan, right? We got it backwards from mm -hmm. orientation, but so what we're doing, the very, very first step, and we've kind of started talking about this, but I'm gonna be on the mini today excavating all this. So our first portion is we're doing this lower beam. So I'm just gonna kind of highlight it here with the pen. So we're, we're just building this portion right along here. And I actually took the liberty and I'm gonna extend it out. I think I extended it out just to line up with the edge of the hot tub, about that far. And I'm gonna hash this so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Highlighter would be great. All right, Gavin. Yes, sir. So another five feet out. It's about five feet. I just figured, since, since, we're, in the, since we're in the concrete business, we might as well maximize it. So that's the portion of the foundation we're doing first. And if you look at the measurements, we got two beams. Um, each beam that the engineer drew out is 12 inches thick. Well, okay, great. Um, we've got a four and a half, almost five foot beam of what they've, uh, they've drawn. So it would have been 12 and 12. That would have left three feet in the middle of the bag. But what the engineer left out was, as we talked about in the past, when we add the gunite pool on top, is actually adding a foot thickness to the edge uh, of the the, uh, the bottom pool beam we're pouring, the basin. And by doing that, we actually end up with a beam, a double beam, so it's gonna be 24 inches thick on the bottom. So we end up with a foot, two feet, three feet, that leaves two feet to bag in the middle. And that's just ridiculous. And so the engineer calls out right here, fill between beams may be omitted and cast with concrete. Yeah, no kidding, because concrete's way, way more, um, you know, strong and durable than bagging it. No cell phones, please. I know, no cell phones. So, the, uh, as we, we dig this beam, I'm digging down to subgrade, down to rock, and I'm gonna over dig um, by about a foot or two. And what we're gonna end up doing is, is uh, probably tomorrow, myself, Robert, and Boone, and you guys, we're gonna set these bottom boards right here, this very first flat, um, I guess flat portion of the of the bottom pool. And all we're doing is just gonna get the stake down real light, just so we know exactly where it is. We're also gonna come over here and stake this portion. Uh, it's not a very, very long portion that's, uh, actually we're gonna, we're actually taking the beam all the way around out here. It's not a very long portion, it's only about six, eight feet. We'll get that measurement on it, we'll get that flat portion. And then what we're gonna do, which I had a brainstorm last night, is how we're gonna build this perfect arc. Uh, Boone and I, either today or tomorrow, we're gonna lay down uh, four by eight plywood on the ground, mm -hmm. and we're gonna effectively lay sheets that look like this. I'm gonna overlap them on the ground. And we're gonna mm -hmm. lay those sheets around in an arc pattern. We're gonna come put our string line here in the center, and we're gonna eat, make, take two people, two tapes. We're gonna measure from here to here, to here to there. And wherever the center point is, where they actually ma mm -hmm. match up to the exact same equidistant point, that's mm -hmm. our center point of our circle. We'll mark that point with a stake, put a string line on it, and we'll get a, a, a heavy duty marker and we'll mark it around, all the way around, on the plywood, and then we'll cut that plywood in that perfect arc. And then at that point in time, when you guys come by and uh, next week and you start building <coughs> your form boards, mm -hmm. this has got to be real stout, because I'm estimating it's going to be at least eight feet, some portions 10 feet out of the ground. So when we build this, it's going to build a wall straight up, and we use two by tens, mm -hmm. or actually a two by, it'll be two by sixes probably in the garage. Two by uh, eights. Two by eights, yeah. Mm -hmm. Something yeah, really stout. And then we're gonna run out at least, whatever the height is here, we need to run out at least that same distance. So if we go up 10 feet, we need to come out 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And we bought all those stakes today that we can stake down and nail down into the ground. And then we'll do bracing back at 45s, yeah. okay? And when we do that, this has gotta be able to hold a five foot wall, five foot wide, 10 feet tall wall of liquid concrete. 
So this right here has got to be stout, yeah. real stout. And, and when, we, when we build this, this arc, uh, it has to be arced plywood. Um, and if you, look, if you envision the arc, this is going to be kind of like the arc as it's going around. This is the inner arc. It's just going to be boards about every eight inches. That's a terrible arc. But uh, anyhow, if it arcs around like that, the boards will be sitting like that vertically. We're looking down on it, plan view. And these will be the two by two by eights, two by, I mean, it could be two by fours, but they gotta be, if you do two by fours, they gotta be braced even more. But if we use the two by eights we have, and we brace these things around every eight inches or so, eight, 10 inches, and we arc it around, and then we'll screw in the plywood like that, and we'll put two sheets of plywood on, the, on those arc sections. And then we brace all these back <clears throat> at 45. So this structure here is gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be a big massive wall of wood. Yeah, yeah real strong. And then the concrete truck is going to come in with a pump and just fill this thing full of it. Now, that's that's probably the most time intensive part. And then we got to tie all the steel in it. And let me just use this, just use some white space here. Do you have a concrete vibrator? Uh, uh, I'm going to acquire one. But yeah, we definitely need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> thinking about a beam. So now I'm just going to take a cross section of the beam of concrete we're going to pour. All right. So this is roughly. 10 foot tall, right? Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a total beam length of about, I think it's about 50 feet uh, in length uh, that we're pouring. So what we're gonna do is the engineer calls for on the top rebar, it's got a mesh, a double cage mesh of number fives. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this very clear for y'all so when y'all start, and I'm not, not here next week, uh, but y'all be able to see that. Double cage number fives on top, a foot thick, one foot. Okay. Underneath that, then he's got a row of number sixes. Top, he called it out as uh, top beams and bottom beams of number six rebar. Okay, and then when you look at this, ex expand this out, now we're looking down it. So you got your number five cage right here, right? And it also runs like that, number fives. Now right here we're gonna run number sixes. And that probably about every foot, every 12 inches. So you'll have six number sixes right there. Do the exact same thing on the bottom with number sixes. The engineer calls out every 18 inches number fours. Okay. Because they're just not doing a whole lot in the middle. Yeah, number fours down it. Okay? So that's number fours, which is light steel, heavy steel, and they got the cage on top. It's gonna hold up the pool and hold up everything behind it. So if the house wants to shift down because of the just natural gravity and the slope, it'll be pushing back on it. Because when we do this beam, we're digging down in the dirt. Eventually, I'm going to push the dirt back to it. And the rock is right here. This is rock. And so it's holding it back. And then right here, we'll push the dirt up against it. Then I was talking to Gavin about this yesterday. <clears throat> I want to put a rock lug on the outside of this. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to come back and do the rock lug later. So we'll do dowels that stick out four inches. And this is probably sticking to this foundation about you know two feet or whatever. And that these little dowels will come back and we have another concrete pour. And we'll put that rock lug on the edge of it and just kind of dowel it in. Because what I don't want is I want this thing, when we build this thing, that structure, I want it to be super strong and that not be worrying about a rock lug and trying to build that in. And that way we'll also be able to set the rock lug to the right height once we get everything else done as well. And because you know, we put the driveway up to it, because the driveway will be driving right by the side of it. The driveway will be here. There's no reason to have the rock lug down below the driveway. So we'll, we'll, we'll set the rock lug at the same height as the driveway. But I was just thinking we'll, we'll, we'll plan ahead and put these dowels sticking out. So, uh, piece of cake, right? Compared to the retaining wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All this is one big giant beam of concrete. <laughs> yeah, I can hold a skyscraper. It is skyscraper yeah. concrete. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think this is probably, well, skyscraper, they used uh, number eight steel, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're not quite going that big. But this thing is going to be a 12 foot tall, 5 foot wide, 56 foot long seam of solid concrete. It, this thing will be here for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, <laughs> this is Hoover Dam type stuff. Well, do you want to go ahead and make a bunker out of it and put some turrets? Yeah, that, well. the <laughs> boats <laughs> coming in, on. I mean. <laughs> well.
Yeah, you're good. One, two, three. Yeah, that's why I want to go too far now. Here, I can go down right here. Yep, watch out, Robert. Can Robert, Robert, can Robert, Robert grab him? Oh, yeah, one of them. You got it? Just drop it. You're good. You sure, okay, here it goes. I'm dropping him. Good. Go ahead. I can't take credit for this because Boone formed this up. He did a fantastic job. He did it all by himself. I heard it coming. Yeah. I heard it coming. Got it. There you go. There you go. If you want, man, you want a uh, nail gun and we'll hold okay. this. Yeah. Go Sweet. Slide your way. Hey, uh, Sean, this is uh, Mike. Hi. Mike. Hi. Pleasure to meet yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. He does uh, electrical work. So anyhow, we're just going to talk about a few things and clip what you would like. And he agreed to uh, be on camera a little bit. So, uh, so Sean, thanks for coming out, man. Yeah. Uh, Taking a look at this electrical uh, project we've got going on. Yeah. So we got, uh, obviously, you see the garage behind you. Yeah. It's right, about right. 3,600 square feet. And <clears throat> most of it's already wired up. Uh, but I'd like you to do a check over on it and just get a real good, you know, kind sure. of a good quality check. Yeah. Because um, I know you came highly recommended. Uh, so take a look at that for me and then uh, totally. the main house, which is the big one uh, We won't be out of the dirt for another about two and a half months But once we start framing and all that uh, I probably guessing we're gonna need a full electrical bid on this house, which is 6,500 square feet um, Yeah, we mentioned 6,000. So yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty exactly. Good. It's big. So um, I've already bought all the fixtures. Um, I bought oh, okay. um, all the switches, you know, pretty much everything I've already purchased. I, awesome. Yeah, so okay. the only thing I'll need is, um, on your bid, is um, I'll need a um, pretty much all the uh, amperage, you know, like the, um, the 400 amp service uh, to the garage, 200 amp to each, each building, mm -hmm. and then uh, the underground, we're going to trench it and lay the conduit, but we'll just need the wire pulled. Uh, Central Texas Electric said that they're going to, um, they're going to need, they called it uh, 350. Uh, on the wire, on the copper MCM. wire, MCM. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty thick stuff to hold an yeah. average. Uh, it's pretty big. Yeah, it is, and it's, yeah. I think it's pretty expensive. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, Especially, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to go aluminum underground. I want to go copper all the way. Yeah, I would suggest. And that. so there's there's at this house, and so I, I was kind of coming up with a number, but it's about 150 LED fixtures that have to be wired in. Okay. Um, just standard plugs in every room, just to meet code. Okay. Um, and that's it. And then the eaves, if you, you look in the eaves on the garage, you can see uh, about every, I don't know, 10 feet or so, 
there's a, a, an eve light so we're going to do that on this okay. property as well so it's real okay. high and one of these days we'll have, we'll, we'll run a cherry picker and uh that's the time we'll install those lights like uh, a, a boot easy. lift yeah exactly it's like it's easier for everybody okay, okay uh, yeah. and it's gonna get high in the corner over here okay. so that's about it so the property is gonna have a pool and i was trying to run the electrical off the pool electrical and the dock electrical off the house electric um okay because the garage we got electric car uh so we wired in we, we wired in four plugs for electric cars and the amperage load in the garage could be quite high. Yeah, um, especially so, on fast charging. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. So each house we've designed, and I'll, I can get in more detail with you later, but it's all about um, uh, solar panels. And each house, having uh, we were using Enphase, and they have a smart panel system uh, that allows the house to keep running uh, during an electric electrical, electrical outage. And uh, okay. it's pretty neat. So it'll disconnect you from the that. grid, and then you'll run on it. But I'm also looking for um, a guy to help me we can install the solar panels, but we're looking for an electrician to actually connect it to the, the yeah, grid do, do panel. The system. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, InFace had like a like a thirty minute online training just to get acquainted okay. with their equipment. Yeah, I'd want to probably check that out. But yeah, it's I yeah. mean for somebody like you, you'd be like, Oh yeah, piece of cake. Yeah, yeah I mean <laughs> somebody would be like, Yeah, I didn't Yeah, you already know what you did. <laughs> I know, yeah. I click, no, click, no. click, done. Yeah, I want to check it out. So there. yeah, so we're looking about. at potential solar panel install, uh, mm -hmm. the full wire of this house, pretty much labor only because we're gonna buy everything. Um, and then check over the garage. Um, all the underground um, okay. wire to it, but I'll buy that. I just need it pulled. Um, then How long? Do you, it's yeah, a good. It's a good run. Okay, because stuff like that, uh, it's always best to have that wire laid out and slide the pipe over it. Oh yeah, Instead before you before you lay it. Because that's yeah, yeah. You know, it's very thick and heavy and it won't bend very well. Okay. Yeah, See, I already like it. You already, <laughs> you already saved us a whole lot of time laying conduit. Yeah, that'd be a chore. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. I've done it. Done yeah. It. Yeah, but it's when I was 20, 25. <laughs> Yeah, what are you like, 20, like 28? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's a few years okay, ago. Okay, so the we measured it off. I think it's a okay. 120-foot run because they're going to okay. drop drop a pole on the street. And as you can see, the, the yeah. pole cuts through the property. They're going to relocate that pole. So we're going to go under job. underground from that pole, and we're going to go around the backside where, where the main 400-amp service is going to go, and that's where we're going to break off to the 200-amp panels. Okay. Um, and it's almost like just two breaker panels, two breakers there that go to each sub panel on uh, the yeah. inside of the house garage. Yeah. And then we're gonna have another quick underground run, 200 amps to this house. I'm visioning, I know you don't see it, but the house edge is right here. Yeah, I want to put a few kind of where. Yeah, I know the stakes are the yeah. inside uh, wall. So this and, is. Yeah, if you, if you kind of look, right here is the, is the face of the house. And there's a little indention okay. in the house. It's a great place for electrical panel right here. Okay, so, so uh, it's more of this. Yep, yep, so this is the, this is the sub basement. Um, it's, it's like a walkout basement. And then up at top will be your first floor. You walk in okay. uh, on like top of the hill. That, exactly. Yeah. The whole the garage is going to tie in right to the first floor. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then we have a third floor above it. And so, oh, wow. eight, for load analysis, we're going to have three, maybe two AC units. But I'm estimating 10 tons of, of uh, cooling on this property. We're going to we're going to spray foam the entire thing. Uh, so we can talk to the AC guy. He was saying maybe two units, but he said maybe we could talk, maybe do three. Isolate them that way. But okay. amperage load shouldn't be too heavy. Uh, 10 tons for the size of house. I mean, a massive house, but we're really insulating it well. We're putting the, uh, yeah, we're actually going to do open foam cell with a six inch walls. The insulate, yeah, right. our value is going to be, um, I think it's close to 50 or 60. So it's pretty extreme. Wow. So good deal. Good yeah. Deal. So yeah, yeah. yeah, man, I just want to look forward to your bid because, you know, finding a good electrician is really hard. Uh, it's been really tough. It seems to be that way yeah. up here anyway. Yeah. You know, Houston, you obviously it's more populated. Yeah. yeah but, but, more of a concentration of them, but yeah, here's right, few right. and far between. Seems like I've contacted six or seven of them, and you're the I think the second to show up. <laughs> really? <laughs> so okay. You're two out of seven, so you get an A plus for showing up. <laughs> All right, good deal. Awesome. Well, okay. And cool. you have an AC guy. Yeah, I sure do. Okay. Do you good. do AC work too? Yeah, yeah kind of a little bit. Yeah, yeah, not too much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you want, I'll show you inside just what yeah, they're going yeah. on. Go and check it. This little curved portion right here that Boone just did. Uh, this is the like a mini foundation what we're going to be doing behind us that's going to be much more stout and about that tall and probably probably even taller so yeah but we're gonna where we have uh two foot gaps between the boards they're probably every eight inches we're gonna have a board uh a two by six or two by eight behind it supporting it 10 feet tall and braced all the way back it's gonna be stout all right you want to you want to lay this one out yeah yeah
How are you doing? It's a fantastic sir. Friday. Good to see you. It's good to see you, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Gavin. Man, what a gorgeous day out here. You just, I know. You just never get tired of that view. It's a beautiful, clear, crystal Texas morning. A little crisp in the air and beautiful, calm water out there. It's going to warm up to, I think, 60 degrees today. It's going to be perfect. Yeah, but you try. And to top it off, today's payday. <laughs> Out of the entire wall, that right there is probably the weakest, the most critical yeah. point. So I'd run long rebar. Okay. And then the double cage going back, um, the, the critical pieces are the top two pieces, mm -hmm. double cage. Everything underneath that, it's not just really just there to hold the concrete up. Okay. But yeah, that's the overturning portion of the top of that flying buttress, if you will. Gotcha. Yep. The rock lug will stop at some point uh -huh. and then go straight down to the bottom rock lug. And then the bar would come on back. And that way we don't have to do the 130 degree bend that I was talking about. Because it really doesn't matter which way the rebar, if it bends down or up or sideways, all we're doing is just tying into the wall and giving a, imagine like a, a five foot diameter hold on. So as it'll distribute the overturning load back down to the ground. Now we were gonna build a double cage on that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like I said, the only reason we're doing a double cage mm -hmm. is just to add more steel to it. Yeah, it just needs more to yep. build that up. Because okay. that steel's gonna be under tension yes. the whole time. And like I said, the top two rows of steel that tie back in down to the uh, the dead man here, mm -hmm. the, the base, it will be, like I said, the top two is all, the only thing that is doing anything. Everything down below is just to hold the concrete together. Okay. And for this right here, do you want a, a bottom cage on this? I know we're going to slope exactly. it to the ground. So, so right. we'll tie that then then into the bottom. Correct. Okay. So all we got to do there is the guy's already dug it out, but it caved in. So mm -hmm. hand dig it out a little bit more and just take some, might even be one footers, maybe 18 inch uh, angles, L's, and just tie them in that way. Real simple. Just turn it down and maybe one bar going across. And just when we spray the gun, it'll just fill it up and be good with it. Yes, sir. Yeah. All righty. Cool. So we were trying to hire, um, they uh, they told us, hey, we'll be here Monday. And uh, I texted him this morning, I was like, all right, you're about to, you missed two Mondays in a row, so what's going on? And he's like, oh, I meant January 10th, Monday. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, well, that's not gonna work for us. So I called the other stucco crew back and uh, they're coming out today uh, to, to give us a, they already gave us a good price, but let's see if they, they might start tomorrow. And that's great, um, but there's a there's a language barrier, so I'll have to get with Robert to help me communicate, and uh, we'll get them going. But that's exciting. Yeah, actually, uh, get the stucco finished up, get the exterior of the garage finished. How you doing this morning? Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? I'm uh, good. Hey, all right. My only concern here is these two. We got two uh, dials in down here, so I'm wondering, am I tying another two dials here? Or just one. Or just one because this one isn't, this one is just. Oh, I like see. Placing is not running off of the entire. <clears throat> so part. we need to rate, well, what we'll do is we'll end up cutting this with this wood out okay. um, to give us gaps to get concrete underneath these rebar. Um, but what we need to do is, yeah, absolutely, we'll tie another L right here down. Right. And this one, that's actually, yeah, you know, because this corner here is putting a lot of stress. If we can put another L on it, that'd be great. Okay. So an another five, number five L, it's 10, 10 foot bent in half yeah, on both right of there. these pieces, yeah. We were, yeah, we were just questioning because we saw those two right there and as we were putting all these up, I didn't want it to be like a lot more harder putting in the L's if we had to. Yeah. yeah. So we, he didn't want to do anything until we absolutely like make sure. To like okay. X. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for asking. We're gonna get this scooted over a little bit, and then we're gonna get it tied in here. We're gonna have to grab something else, but if you want, if you want to hand that to uh, Jay, he'll put it in real quick, and I'll, I'll go around and help him. Yeah. If you snip these two little pieces of uh, tie or yeah, three pieces of tie, right it'll bend over and it'll be oh, perfect. Yeah, we'll okay. You do that. We'll get that in real quick. Damn. Oh no, I can't keep on that. Two. Four, six. Oh, yeah, for, for the inside two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one doesn't. Well, get four 15 footers, and then these will be shorter. Yeah, these are going to be shorter. They'll be going to that dial right there.
was taking some measurements down there and it was looking like uh, the pool, I think I said this earlier, but the pool I was gonna make is just a little bit wider. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, I know it's a big pool to begin with, but if we add just a strip in the middle, an extra three feet, we can bring this beam out and then tie the arc in at the same arc uh, point. Mm -hmm. But the pool is gonna look so much bigger and it's not gonna cost us anymore because three feet of gunite in the middle <laughs> You're not changing much cost. Mm -mm. Oh, it'll just keep coming out here. It'll yeah. change this arc a little bit. Exactly. So the arc point will be the exact same, but now the the uh, straight line will start here. So we'll just change this arc to meet here and over, which will pull this wall out. And then I was going to extend this over just to make it straight. And how many tub. more feet? So yeah, three feet. About three feet. Yeah. So I'm going to excavate that right now. Get this beam uh, cut. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be able to get the mini all the way in and dig the beam oh, up, yeah, up trench. <laughs> I'll be able to... Oh, you had a motive. <laughs> I'm going to make it wider so I can get in there and work. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? And so I'm going to make a perfect wall for y'all to form your boards on. Oh, yeah. That would be then, nice, uh, nice. That way when you pour the concrete, it's not that far out of ground at this point. Well, yeah. when it's all said and done, it'll be all about the same anyway because you're going to have a nice, clean, uh, clean wall there. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea at least. Cool. All right, well, so I'm going to start on now. All right. Flying buttresses well, I've, I've made think, back. You've seen the old churches in Europe? <laughs> yeah. Where they, uh, they've got these big stone walls that can't support themselves, yeah. but then they got a column yeah. coming off it the side of it. It just comes off the ridge. And yeah. it's like an arch, yeah. the strongest structure in nature, right? The arch, and it comes over and it supports the walls on the exterior of the building. Excellent. And that's what we're doing on the retaining wall. We're just doing on the, the back side of the retaining wall, we're putting a flying buttress. And uh, like I said, under down in the corner, it's not doing anything. But up where we're putting the rebar at, it's that's the uh, tie point we're uh -huh. holding it back. So in a way, well, it's, we'll like, it's like a reverse flying buttress, if that's right. such a thing. Well, we'll have these two boys. They'll finish that up and start on that. Yeah. Robert's just about done. We'll pull around to finish that back wall. Yeah. And then so I'll just help them with that. And that's we'll where we done. need the most help is that corner down there. Yeah. Is, uh, we need to get, get some manpower on. Yeah. on that robert and i are just pulling off this and finishing it up cool Go. all you need on this back wall is to get good right so i was thinking about going since the wall is much shorter there it's only a few feet out of the ground yeah going to a single cage um because we don't need all that strength and durability but so we're we going to run a single cage are yeah. we running double cage on this five feet here right Correct. then we're going to run a single cage against that wall yeah. the new stuff that boone i and justin put up yesterday yeah we'll do single cage single cage once y'all get straight. there i'll show you exactly what to do and that should go pretty fast yeah um and then i need to add on another eight to ten feet of uh form boards okay but i want to dig first i'm gonna okay. move the dig dig <laughs> all right i dig it all right and he used a mule and just a scoop <laughs> for 29 years wow I thought, my God. That's not even a whole horsepower, man. I know, that's, but, that's one but can you power. imagine getting up every day for 29 years and taking off another inch? And when do you decide it's that I'm done? When, you, when your meal dies? When or? you're dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to turn the wall, and it's only going to be 10 inches to 12 inches thick along the, the new form boards. Single cage it up. and. Once I actually put the string line on it, you'll see it's gonna get real short, but yeah. we're just gonna put a, a flat cage just to tie back into the dirt here. Okay. But a single cage, turn it down, maybe just a little turn up. So we'll just put a flat cage, turn yeah. rails up, build that right off that plywood, two inches out. Exactly. Yeah. And right there where um, the beaver's at, we're gonna put a little board in there, and when they spray the gunite, it's gonna be like two and a half feet thick, but we're gonna transition down to the 12 inches like it's supposed to be. Okay. And I kind of kind of correct that little air right there, but it's all going to be underground. It's all done, so you'll never know it's there. But yeah, I think that's the easiest thing to do. So this will be this will be cement on top of this, and then this will be covered with dirt. Right. So right sloping where cage, down the hill. Where that top cage is. Mm -hmm. We just need to kind of hand dig out this corner here, and we'll just kind of turn that steel down with a couple of braces, uh -huh. almost like a flying buttress is going to go right here again, like I'm talking uh -huh. about uh, the wall. And then we're going to transition down to this flat cage on the bottom. Um, and you can't see it, but there's a there's a mark on that two by four that's about a foot off the the new form board wall, and we're just gonna continue that arc around. And they're they're already told Bucky and Jay to continue the the um, the uh, steel cage around that arc pattern. 
We're just gonna have a thick gunite section behind it. That's all. Okay. Like I said, more gunite. More we're gonna double cage down to the L's. Then, yep. then we're, we're gonna single cage on this side and yep. then go to single cage on this side so, right here, right? So pretty much right here, we're just gonna do one of those. So we hand dig out this corner right here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a flying buttress, <laughs> a reverse flying buttress back down to this corner right here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go single cage from there, which we're only gonna be uh, maybe five feet out of the ground for this retaining wall. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one should go real fast. We just got to get to it. So uh, anyhow, Charles agreed to be on uh, on film with us yes, and talk about our garage doors. Yes, sir. And uh, just a real quick backstory: I was, I was out walking out the property to go get food for the guys, and Charles comes walking up and he's like, "Hey, you need some garage doors?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my God, I've been I need garage doors bad," because uh, I was talking to a couple of companies in San Antonio and they were saying they're four to six months out in garage doors. And as you can see, our garage is going to be done here in about oh, I mean, two months. will it'll be livable. Mm -hmm. So. It was like, yeah, man, maybe four weeks or so. So yeah. really appreciate that. So yeah. even more backstory, um, this beautiful garage is the, the entryway to this property. And we've got four giant garage doors here. And it's quite a bit of metal and a lot of just normal metal garage doors aren't very attractive, even when you paint them or whatnot. Full custom wood doors are astronomically expensive. Yes, very much so. Yeah, so I was talking to Boone and we came up with the idea of we're gonna get the, uh, the uh, kennel dried wood uh, and we're going to mount it to the face of a metal garage door. And that's where Charles comes in. He said, well, to handle that extra weight of the garage door, we're going to weigh each panel, but we're just going to get um, the cus uh, actually commercial grade commercial doors, door. yeah. and which are available right now. Get the commercial grade doors, and then we'll be able to mount the wood on the uh, the face of the garage doors. And then behind it, we can do the insulation uh, insulation panels you're telling me about. Hide everything, hide all your screws. It'll be a nice, smooth-looking job. Yeah, absolutely. You won't have to... Uh, you won't see it. It'll be a nice, very nice, smooth finish. Yeah, right. Look real good. Right. Oh, and of course these doors, the way we built it, it's full, it's custom. So you yeah. gotta, they gotta be cut and measured and ready to go. So, yeah. great price. Uh, service is outstanding. Uh, out of Kingsland. Yes, sir. Um, the Kingsland. the doorway garage company, Charles. Yes, he'll help. He'll hook you up. So yes. hooked us up. Thanks a lot. And uh, so here's the deposit. Thank you. Go. Appreciate it. Yeah. We go go. Uh, Love it. We'll, we'll get them ordered, ordered and. Be out here in a couple weeks. Yes, sir. We'll get it going for you. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, take care. You. All right. Yeah, the, uh, the folks next door have been so generous about allowing us to pretty much, you know, utilize their backyard and, and uh, with all the debris and dirt and materials that I need to get this thing poured and then we can get down the hill with the bobcat and clean up their backyard. And if I start digging that beam, then uh, they won't be. I won't be able to get the machine down the hill. Uh, for about a month and I can't leave their backyard all tore up so I gotta get I gotta get in there pretty quick so I'm gonna have the guys work on half the foundation till I can get, get back in town after the holidays and uh, get their backyard fixed up otherwise the really cool neighbors might be like oh when are you gonna fix this backyard you know it's been a month what are you gonna do so hopefully I'll get it fixed up in a week after we pour that's the idea all right gotta get to work Someone has to, because obviously you ain't. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm too, I'm I want, too adult I want a full bar at the bottom. A what? A full bar at the bottom. 
Oh, yeah. Out of bar. 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 Uh, to keep all those L's in line, uh, to make it stronger. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So it doesn't shift. And then for that little section right there, we'll do one right in the middle. Yeah. Cool. So we'll do some cut off pieces. Because that will be behind uh, all the fucking dirt and shit. Yeah, well. So I have a good backing already on that these side. Right here. What time is it? Before we put it. 4.30. 440. Then you can bring us. Uh, it's time to stop yapping and start working. One, two, three. We, get we need road. four L's, bro. We got one right here. Uh, four hours, y'all. And then we can start building this cable right here. Get my ass up there. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, help me out here. To one more time. <laughs> yeah, one. Okay, yeah. What about this? I don't know. That's a 20, it looks like. This can be a whole 20. He's afraid of the top. Here. It's like the tape. <laughs> Put a tape on it. Walk it off. Anything. Just get it down here. 13 oh, yeah, foot. Are you good with 14? 14, 14 will work. That'll work. Man, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here you go, fam. Where you want me? Uh, right. Can you come over the top? Yeah. That's what sucks about it. Careful, careful there. Hold the line, hold. Careful here. Coming down, coming down. You want it behind this one? Yeah. You can do it. Good job, sir. Good job. You're not the weakest link. You're not the weakest link. Right there, we're there. Just clean it up. Outside. There's a reel right there. So let's tie these together. It should be pretty loose. Nah, it's all hard. Back up. I got it's not hard. I'm harder in the mornings, bro. But only in the morning. <laughs> hey, a solid two oh. counts sometimes, you know. <laughs> When you can't walk anymore, you know an employer you got your effort, got your money out of your guy. Mm -hmm. You're that exhausted. Thanks for your efforts, man. Oh, and by the way, for your efforts, you get paid. So let's get everybody together. We'll get pay out out the door. Oh, I was telling him my fly was down. Dude, you should be able to put You've been your like that all day, man. <laughs> 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 Alright, so it's your Friday's payday. Um, for some of you guys, we've only you'll, we've only been on this project 10 days. And uh, Mike pointed out to me that that's only 700, actually we're only about 600 uh, man hours. What we've accomplished in 10 days, we took, we went from a raw site to string it up almost, yeah, we're about 500 sticks at number five steel. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, and then the lumber the material, 30 sheets, 40 sheets of uh, plywood, plus all the, all the other, uh, you know, all the structure behind it. Uh, absolutely amazing. And plus the digging. Thank you, Beaver. And Jay. Ditch boy. <laughs> hey man, it is, it's hard work, it is. Mm -hmm. Somebody's gotta do it. Somebody's gotta yeah, do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I ran the excavator really nice, right? I you good. Oh, yeah. As we all go, yeah, yeah, good job. All right, so, uh, okay, payday, obviously. We're going to be spraying gunite on Monday. Um, they're supposed to provide a crew to help out. Uh, we'll be helping out, too. I know it's a short week, Thanksgiving week. You guys work, uh, work hard, and uh, we'll go ahead and get you guys out of here. All right, so pay time. So, I, I, I didn't give you all the cool envelopes. Chris, gas. Here you go, buddy. I don't like, like last time I uh, I gave you all an extra four hours or uh, seven hours uh, for driving, just because of the extra drive time. Chris, Chris, Chris. Well, here's two for Ben. Gas and hours. Right. Don't come out. Ben, Ben, Ben. Ben. I thought your name was Kyle. Well, it's actually Benjamin. Benjamin Kyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 
Albert, thanks, man, for your efforts. Okay, oh, you're gonna make me add those up? That's cool. I'll be right back and we'll grab them. Chris, 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 your actual paycheck. Yep. JJJ. Bieber. Gavin. All right. Yeah, you're like, yay. <laughs> I'll accept it on his okay. behalf. I'll just go like that. Uh, thank you very much. Have a safe drive back. Thanks for coming out. I know a couple of you guys are coming out from, from Beeville next week. Uh, Sorry guys, I won't be in next week. I will miss y'all. I know. Very dearly. I will be back the week after though. Okay. <laughs> but y'all guys are bringing one more guy, right? Uh, the, two, two you know, guys. the Framer guys, right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, we'll put them to work. There will not be any, there'll be not any sitting around. So thank you for your efforts. And y'all, uh, y'all take care and have a safe drive. Have a good weekend. Take care. See ya. <sighs>